Hey there guys, this is Robin Hood, and today I am bringing you a, uh, actually it's a 2 versus 3 battle, technically, here, on Waterloo. My allies are Mike and Huge and Comrade Drogo, Drago, I guess, and our opponents are 420, um, who actually is a subscriber of mine, so shout out to him, and Tyrell, and, or Tyrell, and, uh, Suffrag, whatever that name was. As you guys know, I'm not a pro with these um, gamer names. 420 is fairly easy to say. But I'm going to be playing as Prussia. This is the Waterloo map, and what Mike and I like to do if we ever play this map, um, why we decided to do it 3v3, let me quickly explain that. This guy here in the middle playing as Britain quits before the deployment phase is over, so his army just kind of goes... Uh, nuts and we're gonna try to use it but we don't have a human ally and as you guys know if you played the game the AI really is not coordinated enough to really do damage at all although once I did see it win which was um, which was surprising probably said something about uh, who it was facing but <laughs> either way there my army is uh, three, two, well, two Jaeger units, three Prussian Fusilier, then I've got five Musketeers, and four Foot Guards, a Howitzer unit somewhere. There they are, seven pounder Howitzer, and uh, two Lancers, and my General. And like I was saying, what we like to do on this map is um, we take the side with the hill here, and a lot of times when people play this map, you know, they hate being on this side because although this doesn't look like a big hill it is actually extremely easy to uh, win camping it you can put howitzers right behind this ridge here so they can't get hit by artillery but they can fire over it and it's just uh, it's not fun to attack and a lot of people do not like this map for that reason and there you can see rockets coming in. Those weren't supposed to be in the game. Uh, it was no fixed artillery, but whatever. But we move down into the field. We always, uh, this can be a really fun map. And some people do actually enjoy the attacking uphill because it is uh, realistic on this map. But we always try to make it interesting and we go ahead and move down. And here, uh, the AI Britain actually looking very nice as it marches forward although very thick formation with those rockets coming in but as you can see I'm moving I have to move out this way because this little cliff ridge does not allow me to move down there but I'm gonna use that to defend my artillery so my artillery is gonna move up in there my army is gonna take the field down in this area and here you can see Mike playing as uh, Denmark he's going to march forward as well and this army here was really the biggest problem this battle simply because none of us had an army uh, that could really handle this big of a melee rush. Simply because these guys, you know, he had enough infantry to uh, be firing at you. And so we couldn't really outshoot this infantry in enough time to kill off these guys before they rushed in. But uh, they're not going to see action till a lot later in the battle. But had had this army not been here, um, that would have made things a little bit easier for us. Because Mike is going to have to back off several times just to try to avoid the melee rush. Because um, we knew that one with this AI opponent, I had to beat my opponent and most of uh, Austria here before we could even hope to handle the melee rush so we're gonna focus on fighting the ottomans last so right now mike's just going to really kind of skirmish with them he ran forward and placed stakes across this whole line uh just so that he did not get also charged by cavalry because as you can see here there is a ton of austrian cavalry there and uh on my side the skirmish is going to start opening up as well and here you can see this is like the the AI doing its thing. These foot guards are just kind of running around. And uh, here here is where you see AI genius. They decided to have a mosh pit party right here. 
So every single one of this guy's units, except for that one over there, is just going to run and form a giant ball right here. And why that guy did not fire his rockets into this, I don't know. But he's not. I actually, uh, although right now this AI's army can still help us, and we were really hoping that it would just, what the AI usually does is just kind of maybe fires a shot here and there, but it mainly just melee rushes. We were really hoping it would melee rush this army so that we could move up and shoot it, and that would just kind of clog all of this up so that it could not uh, fight effectively against us at that point in time. But, yeah, as I was saying, this is, this is the AI's party here. So, that's going to be what that army's doing for the moment. I am moving some of my foot guards more over this way to support just in case the Ottomans make a move. And uh, when Mike sends some cavalry forward, or actually those are my cavalry. No, those, those are the British cavalry. This guy's going to fall back. So uh, he probably could have just shot them up, but that's going to be the end of that. I'm moving two of my foot guard units far out to this flank as well. And here you can see... We wanted to support the AI player because his units can be useful, but when it's a unit like this of Lightfoot going out this far by itself, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and let it die. So France is going to be shooting this unit up here. You can see my artillery here actually being fairly effective, getting some decent hits. And my artillery, thankfully, was very effective this battle, actually. Um, but... You can see all of my fusiliers and rifles are firing. We're mainly skirmishing with Austria right here, getting some stray shots on these French. But right now, this is the whole battle line. You can see, uh, once again, the British player just being a little bit derpy and getting in Mike's way here. So they're they're firing. They're they're not being overly effective. They're getting some kills, I guess. But uh, they're not in any kind of organized line. And this is, the only reason this is super harmful is because you see army there, army there, army there. With Mike and I, this whole line is pretty much uh, just us because once again the, the AI party right here. Look at that, that is so many men. Uh, so we had to spread our armies out a little bit more. Thankfully we had the troops to do it. I'm extending my lines this way. He's going to get the first volley off, but I do have uh, foot guards here, so these guys are going to be able to handle these fusiliers just fine. These rockets here are actually annoying, but by moving up my troops, which I didn't try to dodge that rocket uh, barrage there, but it actually worked because I was moving up my line to start firing at all of these French line units moving up because this guy didn't actually bring many lights. There's one of them. So he's got to engage me with uh, with these line units. And I don't know why he engaged me. He could have uh, waited for me to move up to him and probably been in a better position. But then, of course, also on that note, I do have the light advantage and had already taken out all of his lights over here. So maybe instead of falling back behind this ridge, he felt that it was necessary to come up and try to uh, to fight me. But... You can see that unit there just getting absolutely slaughtered by both my foot guard units. And that is Austrian artillery firing at me. Oh no, the, the French. This guy also, uh, along with bringing rockets, brought a howitzer. And it was max one artillery there as well. So once again, just a little nuisance. We actually didn't get mad at him for it. Because, uh, you know, those that's just not even worth dealing with you're in the game now but the only time we ever really call it out is if our opponents bring like several rockets or mortar units and uh we had you know our rules are max one none of that fixed artillery and right here i don't this guy is not managing his rockets very well because they're shooting at these routing british light foot there britain's artillery set up behind a building so that it can't actually hit anything lovely ai maneuvering now though yeah the the blob is still there i i still would so love to see an artillery shell land right in the middle of that that would be brilliant um but over here 
Yeah, my, my line's doing fairly well over here. I'm going to push up these foot guards. Yeah, they are taking light fire, but we're going to go ahead and uh, volley real quickly into these howitzers. And, of course, the lights there as well. I am taking fire from those howitzers there. Some of that was deflected by the hill, but some of my rounds got in. And then I'm going to follow up with a quick charge from my lancers. Artillery shell there, almost hitting them. And we're going to uh, hit those howitzers and go ahead and back out real quickly before this cavalry can retaliate. And had he noticed it, he probably, uh, well, he easily could have, you know, fought that with his cav. But I'm pretty sure the guy was probably over here managing these troops or something or else. Uh, that is something that he should have noticed. And I believe this was a large unit size battle. It's 160 instead of the normal 120. So it was just in general a bigger battle. Here we're getting some fire on this cavalry. And my cavalry there. And my men are going to back off here in a second. This unit there taking a dreadful volley. That's going to rout them. And here Britain is starting to move up. Um, its attack's not going to be all that successful. But once again, you know, the troops being there is just overall going to help. So, that's them. They could they could be getting, you know, a much, much better amount of fire by spreading out from this blocky formation. And here comes the rockets. Not all that effective. Rockets, rockets really aren't that effective until uh, close range. Every now and then you get a good hit. Those howitzers, though, can be effective. And where is that? right there seven pounder howitzer uh, this player did not bring an artillery unit the Ottoman player there but over here this unit of foot guards I did actually order to go into square uh, the square got broken by these Lancers so there goes one of my foot guard units I'm gonna return the favor with my lancers but these guys were depleted anyways so they're just going to stall them while these foot guards are firing a little bit but uh, I do have you know a, a almost full unit only lost one man of foot guards there in square so that should I was confident um, effectively stop these French lancer units and over here my artillery is firing at this cavalry um, and it's being fairly effective. These guys have not seen combat. They're down to like half strength except for this unit and the reason for this was uh, y You know, we could be fighting firing at the infantry dealing damage there But as of right now this infantry is just sitting back if I needed to I could swap my support over and you can see all the ruckus going on over here And look at this brilliant AI trying to that guy just kind of fell over and died. Wow um but the, this AI is attempting to charge down a cliff that it is not allowed to walk over to get to this combat area. So, yeah, that's that's our ally for you, being an AI. Um, but like I was saying, this cavalry, though, the biggest threat to us, we figured, was actually the cavalry and then these, uh, these sword units here, back here, the Janissaries, because... If our line gets tied up with a cavalry charge, we're not firing back at that infantry. So uh, the quicker, you know, I, I wanted to really damage this cavalry. I wasn't going to fire at it till it routes, but just to the point where once it hit my lines, it would route so that we wouldn't really have to deal with a giant cavalry threat. Uh, because, you know, I don't really worry about cavalry all that much anyways, uh, simply because... You know, with square formation, you can effectively deal with it. But at the wrong times, even though you could deal with the cavalry in square, it gives the infantry enough cover to move in ways that allows them to uh, end up defeating you that way. But once again here, it's just another shootout with France. I've taken this double line kind of thing, and this British unit's just kind of in my way. Um, I'm actually not really shooting them because I'm shooting over their heads. You can see... The French troops hats up there that's actually kind of a cool angle right there so uh, they're just firing along that line there but these guys I, I don't even care had I been shooting them because 
Uh, they're not really helping that much anyway. They've got like a few men here firing. They've got like two, it looks like two men firing in this whole unit. Uh, due to their ankle. Those are the only ones that can fire. So yeah, that's that's just lovely. Over here, Mike's sending in some cavalry support while these foot units charge. Because um, once again, we were trying to support the AI a little bit. But Mike's actually going to fall back to this hill. And I told him he needed to be ready in case. Because I'm like, I have a good position up here. You know, I'm doing just fine. I've got my flank covered a little bit, backing it with some cavalry there if I needed to stall a charge and fall back. Um, but I, he's going to fall back to this hill just so that he has a better position to fight this melee rush from. And there is that whole line. I am breaking in this flank and once again over here. I'm extending this flank farther. I'm throwing in a musketeer unit and another foot guard unit. So uh, now this, this flank over here really is my reserves. They're not actually in the combat, but they are uh, holding, holding that flank. So now the main reason I'm using all my reserves is because once again we're fighting three armies. So uh, I have to really kind of spread out to fight this. And what I'm going to do here with these guys, I'm having them run over, but I'm going to run up right on top of this ridge and start shooting at this cavalry. And uh, while I'm actually not going to get a shot off on them, they're going to run back over this way um, because he once again doesn't have enough men to just head on charge. And obviously, since I'm doing this move, I don't know if he figured it, but I'm uh, obviously going to be watching it in case he charges to go ahead and square because my goal is killing that. Although here I'm unloading a volley. I had this unit off of fire at will, had this one on just to kill this... Uh, this artillery unit there. And here's the British artillery there. They're saying they exist. Why they're unlimbering like that, no one will ever know. But I'm going to start moving up there. And in the front, I'm still actually fighting France. I've been fighting Austria too. These guys are going to start routing soon. And uh, in the back here, there's still a fresh unit, pretty much of old guard there. Still some French over here, young guard. This is my flank. Got off some volleys into that unit, which is going to go ahead and withdraw. I've got this uh, Prussian Fuselier unit back here. And these guys are out of ammo, so I described this in my last battle. When my units are out of ammo, especially in a fight like this, they're just going to die just charging forward. So I, I pull them to the back. One, it makes you look like you have reserves you can throw in. And um, so, you know, that that doesn't really do all that much, but it can help sometimes makes your enemy think twice about attacking a certain area even though they could easily overwhelm you there and uh, I you know once again am going to find a way to use these guys and we were hoping to use them to uh, any out of ammo units to stop this melee rush so the units with ammo could fire but over here Britain is pretty much off the field. Uh, this is the last unit there that I see. So it wasn't all that effective. You can see just the piles of British dead along this line in their blocky formations that they took. So uh, yeah, that, that was Britain. The Ottomans had a field day with them. You can see this army doesn't even look like it's taken a hit. Although, some of these light units are fairly damaged. That's more from Mike, though, than the British. But, yeah, they don't they don't look like they've taken a hit and they slaughtered an entire army. So, uh, that's, that's what the AI does for you. Uh, Austria here is still pretty much full. And you can see my men are starting to run out of ammo already. And we've still got all of this stuff left to fight. But Austria here is still pretty much full. The only thing I've done to them is taken out their skirmishers. But here, Mike is going to back me up with uh, three lifeguards afoot right there. And I'm going to start pressing this flank rapidly and as hard as I can. Because uh, you see these units here. Once again, we scared off this cavalry. And now my artillery is going to start focusing in this center. You can see the uh, Austrian artillery here. Or not artillery, cavalry. I don't know what I was saying. It's going to go ahead and start charging. It's going to hit this light unit. My line's going to open fire. And then I'm going to go ahead 
and a square formation. And all of these guys here, all of these light infantry units, they're all out of ammunition. So they're they're lined up there to go ahead and do a melee charge to cover me while I press forward. 